Hi, my name is Sam Shami, and I sell the Wi-Spy product in Australia. I'm here today to demonstrate the cool new Channelizer 2.1 software. If for any reason if this gets blurry on the output, you can go jump over to my site, www.y-spy.com.au and get download high-res videos of this. Um, at the time of this recording, the Channelizer 2.1 software hasn't been released. Um, and it's, it was designed to coincide with the Wi-Spy 2.4X hardware product. Um, this is the standard Wi-Spy, which has got better sensitivity um, and also an external antenna connection. Now, as I mentioned, I'm here to demonstrate the software. So the first thing we'll do is start off with the colors. Uh, initially, dark blue uh, represents low amplitude uh, signals or noise and the red represents high amplitude. Okay. So the first view I'll expose you to is the spectral view, um, corresponding to the colors I mentioned. It's likened to a waterfall display, and I think of it like an upside down waterfall, insofar as the bottom of the graph represents time t equals zero, and the top of the graph represents time in the past. In this case, because I've set my time frame to 15 seconds, the top of the graph represents 15 seconds in the past. So if I just push it over to one minute, you'll see the top of the graph now represents one minute in the past. One of the other views that I'll talk about now is called the topographic view. This represents the amplitude on the y-axis and a frequency on the x-axis. Each coordinate within the view represents a popularity. So if we have a look over at the legend, dark blue represents the fact that this coordinate is practically never seen, and red represents the fact that this um, coordinate is seen pretty much consistently over the time frame of our choosing. One other feature that I forgot to point out so far was that the Wi-Spy hardware um, picks up signals from the 2.400 gigahertz all the way up to 2.485 gigahertz and that's what's represented down here. We can elect to change the frequency or the x-axis, in this case it's frequency. Our other options are Wi-Fi channels or Zigbee channels. Okay, I'll just go back to frequency for the time being. The final view that I'm show, going to show you is called the planar view. This isn't something that I use in my usual day-to-day -day activities. But it's pretty straightforward. Basically, amplitude against frequency, similar to the last one, but this one represents more of an inst instantaneous view. We can elect to put markers down, okay, as I'm doing here, and I've got two markers, and we can move them around, and then we can view current, average, and max um, for each marker that we have. Next, I'll show you a quick overview of Wi-Fi. So I've swapped the x-axis over to Wi-Fi rather than just a straight frequency plot. Um, what you'll see now is channels 1 to 11 and 12 and 13. Now in the US you only really have channels 1 to 11. In Australia for example we get up to channel 13. Channelizer is pretty cool because it gives you the spectrum range. When you choose channel 1 in Wi-Fi, it doesn't use channel 1 exclusively. It does spread out two channels on either side. So for example if I chose 3, you can see that in Wi-Fi terms it uses channel 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, not just 3. So if we want to ensure that we have the most, um, the maximum number of independent channels, common rule of thumb is to use channels 1, 6, we have the least amount of crossover or no crossover um, while still retaining the maximum number of independent channels. Next let's do some analysis. So I'll just quickly deselect these Wi-Fi channels. You'll notice that in the area highlighted there's some activity. So we can see some signals happening around here. There's also more activity around 11, over here. There's something around here and something also very consistently transmitting on channel 7. 
I used a program called NetStumbler um, to do a scan of the network and it told me that my Wi-Fi is on channel 1. I knew this already by the way. My neighbor's Wi-Fi is on channel 11. Okay, And I also, just within reception range, are two other Wi-Fi signals on channel 6. Okay, And I can just barely pick them up. Now that we've seen the quiescent state of the system, let me show you some Wi-Fi traffic. Before I show you the Wi-Fi traffic, I'm going to describe the equipment I'm using. I've got a Dell D420 laptop with a built-in Intel 3945ABG card. Um, I'll be using it in its G mode only in this case. On the other end is a Linkless WRT54G router connected to a server. So what I'll do for this example is just get my laptop to transfer a file across the wireless to the server. So I'll get that started now. So you can see straight away that we've got some activity as well. Pretty straightforward stuff. Just a note, um, this scale here, here is measured in dB, obviously, and the difference between 80 or minus 80 dBm and minus 60 dBm is 20 dB, which equates to about 100 times difference in power. With dB, every time you go up 3 dBs, you have to double the power. So it equates, or 20 dBs roughly equates to about 100 times the power. Okay. And um, with the graph here, you'll see that, hopefully if you're keen-eyed, you can see two distinct levels. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit clearer. There we go. And in due course, we'll see another level appear down here. What I just did then was lowered the power output of my, or the transmit power of my Intel wireless card built into the laptop. Now, I haven't adjusted the power of the Linksys router, so it will remain at a high level. Okay, and we'll notice that, that once this area disappears on the topographic, on the spectral view, we'll notice the topographic uh, view giving us this, um, quite useful information. And please remember, you know, minus or oh, 20 dB difference equates to about 100 times difference in power. Okay, so there's a big difference between these two. Okay, so that's, that's uh, low power. Uh, transmitting of my card and that's the highest power. Okay, so can you see the two levels here? They're quite distinct at the moment, aren't they? So I might as well put back my card to the higher level and slowly start doing that. It's quite awkward. Nearly there. Transmit power. Okay, and there we go. So I've pushed the power back up and you'll see once again we're at this level again. So this area here will slowly start to fade away and then my Intel wireless card is this band here and there's my Linksys router. Quite obvious once you can figure out the signs. Okay, the final test that I wanted to do today was to show you the difference with the antenna connected and disconnected. So I'm just starting some transfer again on my laptop. And what I'll do is I'll disconnect the antenna on the Wi-Spy unit. Okay, there it is, it's off, sitting in my hand. We'll let that run for a little bit. So you can see the difference. So you can still see some activity, um, but obviously it can't detect it as well. So for example, the Wi-Fi now seems to be around here around minus 90 or so dB. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll reattach the antenna. Okay, there it goes. So the difference is pretty obvious. The antenna helps quite a bit as you'd expect.